Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Sanity Stream, the place where you go to gain a little bit of your sanity back in what has become a minefield in U.S. news. I have an amazing show for you today, really spicy. We're going to be talking about the three canceled games of the NBA as well as the MLB reaching peak wokeness in the name of Black Lives Matter. I'm going to be talking about the protests peaceful protests going on in Minneapolis after another black man dies, but not the way you may think. Democrats are actively pushing to try to cancel the debates because their candidate is a potato. He may actually have the IQ of one. We are certainly sure to find out. And of course, I'm going to be ending with cancel culture reigning supreme once again, pushing to get Tucker Carlson fired. With that said, let's get straight into today's show. Sports boycotts. NBA cancels three playoff games. WNBA scrubs three contests and three MLB games scrapped. Several major sporting events were canceled Wednesday in response to the shooting of Jacob Blake and Kenosha, Wisconsin. The Milwaukee Bucks decided to boycott game five of their ML NBA playoff game with the Orlando Magic ESPN reported. At every single step of this, the NBA and their players have had complete and total control. Adam Silver has literally and figuratively bent the knee to the players. And what has he gotten for it? Now they are actively going out and canceling games? For who? Jacob Blake? For what happened to Jacob Blake? Because I have some really spicy news that just came out from the DOJ. We'll get into that in a second. But of course, the decision prompted the NBA to cancel all three games scheduled for Wednesday night, reaching peak wokeness material. The other games pitted the Houston Rockets against the Oklahoma City Thunder and Los Angeles Lakers and the Portland Trailblazers. Of course, the woke Twitter sphere and everyone else out there is going to be smashing that like button saying, wow, it is just so amazing that these multi, 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 multi millionaire NBA players are canceling NBA games. Congratulations, you solved race, you, you, you solved racism. You finally figured it out. It was basketball that was causing all the racism all around the country, removing Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben off of those boxes, off of those food products. God, we really solved racism. And Lego, of course, taking away police officers out of their Lego toys. Congratulations, guys. Racism is officially done. We completed it. We did it. Uh, Mission accomplished. We don't have any more to do here, folks. This is absolutely absurd. Anyone who can see that knows that this is absolutely absurd. If these people actually put their money where their mouth is, they would be taking their money and they would be putting it towards actual racial justice. And not just racial justice, but upward mobility justice. How about that? How about individual justice? How about actually helping black people instead of, I don't know, burning, looting, and murdering them. It is a novel concept, I'm sure, and I'm sure it's going to be lost. Because, of course, if you were to ever stand up against this narrative, if you were ever to say, hey, maybe we should uh, do something, you know, instead of just crying and bitching and moaning about how unfair the world is and how unjust the world is, these people have, they are multi-millionaires. They can live anywhere on the planet, but they continue to hate on this country. Continue to kneel for the flag, continue to burn the flag, continue to, you know, peak wokeness. Obviously, LeBron James coming up with the Malcolm X book. And actually, for the record, let me grab it real quick. Let me grab it. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Five minutes later. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got it. We got it, ladies and gentlemen. It took a while. Unlike him, I've actually read the book. Of course, he's not going to talk about how he specifically talks about white liberals and how they are foxes and how they are using black people um, as a means to push their own agenda. Of course, he will never talk about that part because it goes against his very narrative that Mr. LeBron James wishes to create. Uh, With that being said, again, this isn't solving anything, people. It's solving absolutely nothing. I mean... Again, if they really if they're really serious about this, why don't they just start the whole game and not play it? If they really want a true protest, the ratings in the NBA are down by 40% compared to last year. There's still like 8 or 9 states that are, are on virtual full lockdown. 
and yet they can't even pull the numbers in. People are sitting at home with absolutely nothing to do, and they're still not watching the NBA. Congratulations. Congratulations cutting off a giant chunk of your audience for woke economics. Congratulations. And of course, what are they pushing? They're of course pushing Jacob Blake, but ladies and gentlemen, we have new information in the Jacob Blake case, something that of course people aren't going to talk about in the mainstream media because it is just so taboo to talk about the truth nowadays. It is it is, it is so critically taboo to go against the race narrative and the race war that the media consistently pushes on a daily basis. So here we go. Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake had knife in car during Kenosha shooting DOJ says. Jacob Blake had a knife in the car when he was shot by a police officer seven times in the back. The Wisconsin Department of Justice, the DOJ said. Three days after the police shooting set off unrest in Kenosha, several other cities, state authorities have revealed some of the first details about what led up to it. Kenosha police have revealed a little about what happened on Sunday evening, other than they say that the officers have been responding to a domestic incident in the 2800 block of the 40th Street at the time. Now, the GO said the officers arrived at the residence after a woman called police saying that her boyfriend was present and was not supposed to be on the premises. Of course, again, this will never be talked about. Blake was issued a warrant for his arrest, and he was charged with third-degree sexual assault, trespassing, and disorderly conduct in connection to a domestic abuse in July. Uh, let's just get on to the spicy part here. Mr. Blake walked around the vehicle, opened the driver's side door, and leaned forward, the DOJ said in a statement while holding onto Mr. Blake's shirt. Officer Rustin Shesky fired his service weapon seven times. Officer Shesky fired the weapon into Mr. Blake's back. Obviously, uh, Officer Shesky, he is a veteran. He's been on the force for approximately seven years. And, of course, they're not going to talk about that. But here it is right here, guys, the smoking gun. Blake admitted that he had a knife in his possession during the investigation following the shooting, according to the DOJ. Once again, state agents later recovered a knife from the driver's side floorboard of the vehicle. No other weapons were located in the vehicle. The DOJ did not say Blake threatened anyone with a knife. Now, they say, you know, based on, uh, you know, most studies that are involved knife and gun, you know, the, the saying, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Well, you actually can bring a knife to a gunfight if the gun is holstered and that person is within 20 feet. So within 20 feet, all it takes, the, the time it would take you to run full force to go stab that person is just as quick before that person is able to get their gun up to fire. Ray Sean White, the man who said he filmed the video of the shooting that circulated widely online, the original video, by the way, told the Associated Press that he heard officers shout, drop the knife, drop the knife, before they shot Blake but said he didn't see one in his hands. I, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know. It, is all that, does anyone actually want the truth? Because at the end of the day, I really think this is just about burning, looting, and murdering. This is no longer about justice. This is no longer about truth. You have the NBA sitting out for this. There is clear evidence that is being presented by the DOJ. There is evidence of two different angles of Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake had uh, prior convictions. He had gone to the Brass Monkey Bar. He had pointed a gun at people inside that bar. He had sexually assaulted a woman. He had hurt a woman. Where's the leftist reeing about protecting women? What about the Me Too movement? Nobody gives a crap when it's a when it's when it's this. No one cares. Nobody cares about the truth. They only care about their narrative. And it's absolutely disgusting. But I can't say I'm surprised. Let's continue on. Not getting any better, folks. A little graphic here. Uh, you're not going to be able to see too much. Just a little bit of blood. So hopefully we'll be okay here on YouTube. But witness in Minneapolis suicide immediately join in BLM looting for justice. Just another example. Another example example of the police having absolutely nothing to do with it let's take a look at this here i'm gonna zoom in a little bit what's going on oh blank he shot himself 
as you can see here. Help, help, police! And then justice for what's-his-face, running through the stores, and of course, stealing stuff. They don't care about truth, guys. Burn their shit down! Burn their shit down. For what? For your racial justice? This is Minneapolis, by the way. This is George Floyd 2.0. Officers not even involved. That man who shot and killed himself was a murder suspect. Do they care? No. They don't care. They don't care if the guy is a knife. They don't care if that guy is a domestic abuser. They don't care if that guy is a rapist. They don't care that that guy points a gun at somebody. They don't care that somebody puts a gun to, to a woman's uh, stomach. They don't care if a woman's been pistol whipped in front of her kid as everyone gets stolen in their home. They don't care if they gouge out an eye of an officer before they're shot. They don't care. Of course, I listed three different people there. They do not care about facts. Feelings over facts every single time. And this is, this is their justice. Burn, loot, murder. On repeat. And even Don Lemon said himself, Do you know Donald Trump right now is at a 52% percent approval rating with the mainstream media down his neck every single day the burning and the peaceful protests that they keep saying are happening over and over and over again peaceful protests as fires looting destruction death happen behind them no one's believing it anymore the media is a complete and outright fabrication it's all a lie. It's all used to divide us. This race narrative that's being pushed is ultimately being used to divide us as Americans. They do not want unification. These leftists say that they want unification. They don't want unification because they don't believe in diversity of thought. They don't believe in free enterprise. They keep pushing the poison pill. My father's side is Polish. Do you know how many, how many of my family members died in the night of broken glass in Poland when the Nazis came over? And now you have all these people going out to uh, diners and brunches, forcing people to put their hands up, saying, if you don't say Black Lives Matter, they're going to intimidate and attack you. Very similar to Mao. Very similar to the Nazis. If you weren't to put your hand up. I'm not going to do it because. <laughs> you're not going to catch me. You're not going to get me that easy guys. You're not going to trick me. You're not going to spin your words. You're not going to censor me. I already had one of my YouTube's, YouTube videos removed. I already had one of my YouTube videos removed. I, I gave facts. I gave sources. I gave studies. I used a source. From the top epidemiologist in Yale, their top professor that studies viruses, and you know what happened? They removed it because they don't want truth. They don't want free-thinking people. They don't want free-thinking whites. They don't want free-thinking blacks. They don't want free-thinking browns. They don't want free-thinking whatever, whatever race. It doesn't matter. They don't want free thought. And if you dare fight against their narrative, you will be labeled a racist. As they use violence, intimidation, and coercion to get you to comply. Because if you don't, violence. We'll burn your house. We'll burn your schools. We'll burn your churches. And then we'll call you the fascists. Fuck you. On to something a little bit lighter. But again, guys, it's just this is just pure. This is peak clownery. Peak clown world at this point. I am not surprised whatsoever. Nancy Pelosi says there should not be any debates. The Democrats are going to be pushing this narrative, guys. They're going to say that Trump is such an evil bad man. Bad man, orange man, bad. Orange man, bad. Orange man, bad. Shouldn't even be able to debate orange man, bad. 
we have the U.S. government talking to killers, talking to leaders of countries that kill hundreds of thousands of their own people. And we're willing to talk to those people, but let's not talk about Trump. Let's not talk to Trump. We can't possibly debate Trump because Orange Man's so bad. Let's see what she has to say. The wonderful, uh, the wonderful Democrat Nancy Pelosi, the establishment embodiment of corruption. Let's go. That region, but yeah, we all we all miss uh, uh, the uh, enthusiasm of people with their challenges and their questions and the rest. Since you asked about that, I myself just don't tell anybody I told you this. Especially, don't tell Joe Biden. I don't think that there should be any debates. I do not think that the President of the United States has comported himself in a way that anybody should, and, and has any association with truth, evidence, data, and facts. Trump's at 52 percent approval, guys. He's, he's in the 30 percentile among blacks. He's in the 30 percentile among Latinos. The Democrats know they're screwed. They know they chose a potato candidate. They know that he would not be able to even stand for the hour and a half, two hour debate, let alone debate. Because there's no way it would be a bloody massacre. And they're going to try to use this virtuous high ground as Democrat cities burn as people's lives are uprooted and destroyed. My friend in Kenosha, Wisconsin, did nothing to your movement. And you burned his business to the ground. Congratulations. You've, you've just made 20 more enemies. No, that, that entire store, their entire people that go there. You just made 300, 400, 500 more enemies. Congratulations. And now the Democrats say they won't even debate? Of course they won't. They don't know they know they don't have a shot. No matter how many how many dead people that they can siphon votes and throw them in, take all their dead cats, get them to vote, all democrat for some reason. Things come in in the mail, only able to vote democrat. New York still hasn't been able to figure out who won an election up there. New Jersey just had four people arrested for election fraud, having to do a redo. Over 80,000 ballots that have come in throughout the United States have been shown that they're fraudulent. The only way the Democrats can win is if they cheat. And they're just going to keep pushing this race narrative. They're going to keep pushing the moral high ground as their cities burn. I wouldn't, I wouldn't legitimize a conversation with him, nor a debate in terms of the presidency of the United States. Now I know that the Biden. You still haven't. You still haven't accepted it. It's been almost four years. You still haven't accepted that Trump is your president. And he's about to be your president for four more years. He's about to be your president for four more years. Congratulations. You think you think Wisconsin? You think Wisconsin's going to go blue now after what's going on in Kenosha? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's going to go red. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And campaign thinks in a different way about this. <laughs> but I just, I thought what he did in the uh, 2016 was disgraceful, stalking Hillary Clinton like that. I was disappointed that the press didn't say, go back to your station. You're not here. You don't own this stage. You, are, you have your own podium. She ha She's going to defend Hillary Clinton. Hillary Miss Libya herself, we came, we saw, he died. 20,000 dead Libyans, 500,000 dead Syrians. Obama-Biden cabinet has led to the deaths of more black and brown people than any president in U.S. history, including Savory. Congratulations. 
congratulations congratulations truth truth just they can't handle truth they say they have the truth and the facts nope it's all optics it's all a narrative it's all a lie these people are disgusting she would never survive if she wasn't a Cali Democrat. She'd already be gone a long time ago. So, Fire Tucker, Cole, Fire Tucker Carlson now, of course, Tucker Carlson, trending on Twitter again for, I don't know, speaking the truth. And, of course, when law and order is not being enforced by police officers, you are going to have people that are going to enforce the law for themselves. If I was up there in Kenosha, I would have been up there with my friend. I would have been up there defending his business. And I wouldn't have let these animals come and torch it and destroy his entire way of life. A little mom and pop shop. Black Lives Matter is a domestic terrorist organization. He did nothing to you. His family did nothing to you. Pasty little white boy. Never heard a fly in his entire life. Fuck you, people. Tucker Carlson, of course. The cancel culture is on. Seems like he is literally the last man standing on TV who is able to tell the truth. So let's Chaos take a look. The began with the first George Floyd protest on Memorial Day has reached its inevitable and bloody conclusion. Last night, three people were shot on the streets of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Two of them have died. Police say they've charged a 17-year-old with murder. Here's what Kenosha looked like last night. Mostly peaceful protest, guys. Can't you see? Isn't it obvious? I mean, look. Your eyes are lying to you guys. Your eyes are lying. Just listen. Listen to the mainstream media. Listen to the corporate media hacks. Listen to them. Listen, 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 listen. Don't use your eyes. Don't use your eyes. So peaceful. Two people died. Many of the details remain hazy. Big media organizations have done their best to downplay and ignore the violence in Kenosha and around the country. Okay, good. I'm glad they blurred that because that's the uh, that's the first guy that sh got shot. Um, if you didn't watch my podcast yesterday, I broke all of this down. Um, it's you know I don't show anything graphic, but I I do highlight the details. If you want to go check out the last stream, you can see a little bit more info. Country. But there were a few reporters on the scene last night. One of them, Richie McGinnis of the Daily Caller, was standing nearby when a man was shot in the head. McGinnis ripped off his T-shirt and used it to try and staunch the man's bleeding. Can you imagine being that guy who got shot and looking up and just seeing a bunch of cameras in your face? The first person on the scene, what did he do? Did he go to apply pressure? And try to save this man's life? No. This this really is this is the truth about what people have become in society. Do they go to help the man? No. They're they're more interested in their likes, they're more interested in their follows, they're more interested in their clicks. They don't care. Did they apply apply pressure? Did they try to help this man? Nope, they're just sitting there. Oh, gotta get it on videotape. These people are disgusting. They're LARPing. Medic! Medic! Shut up. Here's the scene. Oh, man. 
skip forward a little bit just so we don't have to watch that again but the guy did get shot there and of course Boy gets thrown to the ground, or actually he trips and falls. Man runs up, hits him with a skateboard, gets shot. Next guy comes up, handgun. And by the way, you're not going to, every single picture that I've seen that's being pushed from the mainstream media of that guy who got shot in the arm, they crop it so that you can't see his gun. It is a total lie. Everything the media does is a lie. Everything. But racism, my racism, white supremacy, it's in the ether. Cancel every sports game. Cancel every debate. Cancel white supremacy, guys. Re Orange man bad. Orange man bad. <laughs> So what does that amount to? We're unsure. A court will decide whether what you just saw qualifies as self-defense. As of tonight, we really don't have more details. Wow, that was some serious John Wick stuff, though. That guy, uh, for a 17-year-old, I believe his name's Kyle. Talk about some good training. I mean, that kid was not out of the fight. The moment he fell to the ground, did he quit? Did he let his head get bashed in with a skateboard? Did he allow himself to get shot with a guy with a pistol? Nope. He was not out of the fight. Boom, boom. Protected himself. Second Amendment. Hoo ya. We do know why it all happened, though. Kenosha has devolved into anarchy because the authorities in charge of the city abandoned it. People in charge from the governor of Wisconsin on down refused to enforce the law. They stood back and they watched Kenosha burn. This is what you're going to continue to see this, guys. You're going to continue to th this. You know, when I heard Tim Cast, Tim Pool, the journalist, say that civil war is coming, I said, you know what? That's just a little too much. I mean, sure, there might be civil unrest, but civil war, I mean, come on. I mean, that's just clickbait, right? And then I see stuff like this, and I'm really starting to, you know, it, it's really starting to, to drive into me and it scares the shit out of me it should scare the shit out of everyone else we have a lot more in common than the media would have you believe they want to divide us they want to conquer us they are corporate media machines if you're on the left aren't you the one who's constantly saying we have to break down these big corporations who do you think who do you think funds these news media companies do you think it's in their best interests to have us unify do you think it's in their best interests to try to create a loving environment for the citizens of america do you think it's in their best interests for them to drop this race narrative and just start to see each other as men and women not a white man a black man an asian man a hispanic man woman whatever no, they don't want that. They want tribalism. Divide and conquer. It is one of the earliest, literally Sun Tzu, one of the earliest and most distinguished ways to win is to divide and conquer. So you no longer have to fight a united front of people. Have them fight amongst each other. And when they are scattered, you're able to take them out one by one by one. These people are disgusting. They're monsters. They are corporate media. Whenever you talk about the mainstream news, always add that name corporate because that's what they are. So are you really surprised that looting and arson accelerated to murder? How shocked are we that 17 year olds with rifles decided they had to maintain order when no one else would? This is, this is ultimately what's gonna happen. Gun sales are through the roof, guys. Militias are growing. People are getting sick of this. They're watching the cities burn. Eventually, it's, I mean, if the police aren't going to enforce the law, 
then then citizens will well-regulated militias will is this the america you want is this the safety and security and freedom and liberty that you want burning looting and murdering doesn't matter what the context is ever was it a black man that was shot well that's a good enough of a reason for us oh wait he was a rapist nah it doesn't matter ah, he was a women beater doesn't matter he was a killer doesn't matter police weren't even involved doesn't matter was a made-up story doesn't matter it really doesn't matter to them Everyone could see what was happening in Kenosha. It was getting crazier by the hour. Watch this scene from last night. Kill the police! Kill them back! Kill them back! Kill the police! Kill the police! Kill the Is it, are we, is this the Middle East? Is, is this, is this Iran? What, like, what is this? What is this? Is it, is it, is this why I joined the military? To fight for people like this? If you don't like America so much and you want your little socialist utopia, then get on a raft and go to Cuba. If you hate America so much and you hate the foundational principles of this country and the Constitution, then get out of here. Leave. You don't love this country. You don't love what this country stands for. Go. I'm pissed. Oh, God, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to end it right there. You know what? I really wish I could have ended it on a lighter note. I, I never like to leave on an angry note. But man, the news is just, it is just pure toxicity at this point. It's that masculine toxicity coming in with the re from the leftists. Once again, simply unable to take personal responsibility for their actions and using every single excuse in the book to burn loot and murder it is the way it is the only way for them because they believe that is called justice mob rules screw that usa usa trump 2020 if you enjoyed the video this is the sanity stream with your host lucius cole where i hope you gained a little bit of your sanity back in what has become an insane american world the coal factory is nice and hot join the coal factory please make sure to subscribe like and or comment we are a movement we will not be censored we will not be stopped we will win let's get it done guys see you in the next one love you peace <laughs>